At the point when we look into the immense span of the universe with its planets, stars, and cosmic systems, a central inquiry emerges. For what reason is there some different option from nothing? This puzzle turns out to be much more confounding when we consider the balanced laws of material science governing our universe, where matter and antimatter have all the earmarks of being similarly adjusted. Yet, upon perception, we track down that the stars and worlds we see are overwhelmingly made of matter, with almost no antimatter present. This leads us to contemplate the unpredictable forces that resulted in this lopsidedness, bringing forth the universe as we see it. What significant instruments influenced the situation and, in truth, us, a universe overflowing with systems, stars, and the secret of our own reality? Hundreds of years prior, researchers accepted the universe existed in an perpetual structure, represented by an impermanent laws of material science. However, in 1927, a Belgian minister and researcher named Georges Lemaitre proposed an alternate thought. He recommended that the universe started as an enormous, pregnant, and early-stage iota that detonated, bringing forth the more modest particles we see today. Despite the fact that his thought at first slipped by everyone's notice, cosmologist Edwin Hubble's disclosure in 1929 that the universe is extending gave support for Lemaitre's idea. Following this disclosure, Researchers contemplated that if the universe is extending, it must have begun from a minuscule thick point. This idea was cleverly named the theory of prehistoric cosmic detonation by stargazer Fred Hoyle, a term later embraced by its advocates in the mid-1960s. Cosmologists Arno Pensius and Robert Wilson accidentally found proof supporting the huge bang hypothesis while endeavoring to tune into microwave signals from the smooth way. They coincidentally found a persistent foundation commotion which ended up being the grandiose microwave foundation radiation, a leftover of the huge bang. However, how did the huge bang lead to the arrangement of planets, stars, and universes? Through fastidious estimations and perceptions from telescopes on the planet and tests in space, researchers have formed a convincing clarification. Roughly quite a while back, all the matter in the universe rose up out of a solitary point or peculiarity in a savage eruption of energy. This fast development known as expansion made space and the crucial forces of nature. Inside parts of a second, energy changed into particles of matter and antimatter, the majority of which demolished each other. Luckily, a limited quantity of issue made do at last framing protons and neutrons. Within the space of minutes, these particles started to intertwine, making the nuclei of hydrogen and helium. Over the long haul, particles formed, filling the universe with billows of gas. Later, around 380,000 years, the astronomical microwave foundation radiation was abandoned, containing little waves of matter that ultimately developed into worlds and cosmic bunches. Today, our perceptions of the universe, combined with logical headways, paint a steady picture. Our universe is prevalently made of matter, keeps the laws of physical science, and has evolved north of billions of years from a uniform ocean of hydrogen and helium. It has changed into an organized universe, loaded up with universes, stars, planets, and indeed, even clever life. This amazing venture from straightforwardness to intricacy remains as a demonstration of the wonders of enormous development and human inventiveness. Beginning from today, we can trace back in time and ask about the beginnings of every individual structure or part of the universe. With each answer we get, we can dig further, asking how and where it emerged, until we come to the point where our comprehension fails us, where we're constrained to concede we don't know. Yet, then, at that point, we can consider what we do know and question how it became, considering if there's a possible way it might have risen up out of nothing. The life we encounter today comes from little particles making everything around us. These particles go about as building blocks, assembling into complex particles fundamental for life. At the most central level, these building blocks are molecules, the fundamental elements involving all matter in the universe. However, atoms didn't suddenly show up at the universe's initiation. Rather, they went through a drawn-out course of development. This cycle includes the life pattern of stars, birth, life, and demise. When stars arrive at the finish of their lives, they produce new materials through solid reactions. These materials add to the arrangement of new stars, sustaining the cycle. 
This inestimable reusing is crucial for the presence of divine bodies like planets and the multifaceted science vital for life. For the universe to have stars and systems as we notice today, a few basic variables needed to adjust. Gravity assumed a crucial part, conglomerating more modest heavenly and cosmic groups into bigger designs. Also, the presence of dull matter in the universe's beginning phases forestalled the deficiency of issue into space during star development. A fragile equilibrium of various kinds of issue and radiation was fundamental for peculiarities like the vast microwave foundation and the arrangement of cosmic systems. Besides, slight varieties in issue thickness, enhanced by gravity over the long haul, were significant in forming the universe's design. These beginning irregular characteristics, combined with the rise of dull matter and ordinary matter, established the groundwork for all that we see. The secret extends while thinking about the matter-antimatter balance. While physical science naturally treats matter and antimatter similarly, our universe displays an excess of issue. Different elements could represent this difference, for example, unique circumstances during the universe's development, offbeat cycles defying standard norms, or cooperations inclining toward the creation of issue over antimatter. The standard model of material science consolidates these thoughts. However, it falls short of giving a complete clarification. Likewise, dull matter poses a problem. Regardless of not being formed of standard model particles, its presence is surmised through various perceptions. The origins of dull matter remain dubious, with speculations going from its creation during the early universe's hot stage to its development as a result of gravitational interactions. In Rundown, while we have made huge steps in understanding the universe's actions, Many inquiries persevere with respect to its beginnings and peace. Investigating these secrets drives logical inquiry, pushing the limits of our insight and rousing new roads of exploration. There probably been a system to create the energy expected for the universe's presence when it didn't beforehand exist. As per grandiose expansion, our driving hypothesis regarding the universe's pre-enormous detonation beginnings, the fact that this energy makes it conceivable began from nothing. While imagining the beginning of the hot, huge explosion, we normally envision a situation of outrageous heat, thickness, and energy. Currently contemplating how this state appeared, we go up against two points of view. Right off the bat, we could essentially state that the universe was brought into the world thusly, with the underlying conditions set as such missing further clarification, a position that some may portray as giving up in the domain of hypothetical physical science. On the other hand, we can embrace the more inclined toward approach among hypothetical physicists, figuring out a hypothesis to clarify those underlying circumstances. This involves making forecasts that go astray from the ongoing acknowledged hypothesis and therefore exposing them to exact testing. Infinite expansion originating from this last option approach upset how we might interpret the universe. S. Introduction to the world. As opposed to imagining the hot and thick beginning as a vastly little, Limitlessly hot point, expansion places a pre-huge explosion stage where space itself encountered a really high energy thickness. This fast extension of the universe during expansion finished in the change of energy into matter, antimatter, and radiation, hence bringing about the consequence of the hot enormous detonation. Moreover, expansion not just yields a universe described by uniform temperature and a level appearance but additionally predicts explicit thickness variations consistent with perceptions from a condition of almost void space immersed with energy. A normal interaction has coordinated the development of the whole discernible universe, loaded with its assorted structures. However, while this idea offers a convincing system for figuring out the universe's beginnings, it may not fulfill everybody. The idea of a universe absent any trace of space, time, and the laws of material science can challenge to conceptualize. From a philosophical outlook, one could ponder domains past existence or conditions unconstrained by actual reality. Deductively, there are different approaches to characterize nothing, each legitimate within its particular context. These definitions range from when something didn't exist to the emptiest state of space-time with the lowest energy. While we can affirm that we've progressed from nothing to a universe utilizing certain definitions, others present more vagueness. Ultimately, the subject of the universe's arising out of nothingness stands up to the constraints of our current logical comprehension. While quantum hypothesis recommends the chance of universes emerging from quantum changes, 
experimental proof remaining part slippery. Accordingly, while the possibility that our universe rise up out of nothing holds offer, it requires further investigation and validation within the structure of thorough logical inquiry. Enter Donan He and his group from the Wuhan Foundation of Physical Science and Math, who have made a noteworthy contribution by providing the first numerical verification that the enormous detonation might actually come from quantum variances. At the core of this leading edge lie two basic ideas, the Wheeler-DeWitt condition and the Heisenberg uncertainty standard. The Wheeler-DeWitt condition, brought about by John Wheeler and Bryce DeWitt during the 1960s, addresses a critical headway in the mission for a hypothesis of everything, blending quantum mechanics with general relativity. While this situation and, 